In this video, I'm just going to talk about image tracing, a really great uh, tool in Illustrator that we can use to benefit us if we quickly need to trace a raster graphic and vectorize it, make it vector. Uh, so it's no longer made of pixels, it's made of paths uh, in Illustrator. Therefore, the quality will always stay the same. I can scale it up really large really or really small, and the quality will always be fantastic. We always aim to keep our vectors uh, or to have vectors and not rasters, but in some situations, obviously rasters are great, but here we can quickly trace uh, our raster images. So I have three images here. One, we are gonna deal with the arrows first. I'm just gonna click and drag that into Illustrator. And it's gonna open up automatically in its own tab. And I have it here, I'm just shrinking it down. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna look and know, yes, it's a raster, I can see it's made of pixels. And what you may have done before is trace these individual objects, which is totally fine. But here's another quick way to do it. Instead of that, we can actually go, if you have your control panel open, window, and control, it's gonna have this control panel there. And what I can do is I can just click on image trace. I'm going to click on that, and what that does, it automatically, uh, Illustrator automatically understands the shapes, the colors, everything I'm looking for to quickly take this raster image and convert it all to vectors. No more pixels, just vectors. Now, obviously, that does not look great, but that is the default setting. And if I go over here a little bit further and I go to the presets, and by default, that's what it is. The, I can have a technical drawing version and all these different versions, 16 colors, but the best one you could actually get is high fidelity photo. Let's click on that, see what happens. Now, if you have a pretty simple uh, object, which I'm going to show you later in a very complex. Obviously, the timing on how it goes is going to vary. Something small will, won't take long, and like this one, not too complicated, and it didn't take too long at all. Now, what this did, it showed us a concept, a rendering of what it will look like if you vectorize it. See, no more pixels, but you can see it's not perfect the way it would have been traced in a better way manually, but it does a pretty good job not to finalize it because it's still not vector. Uh, is to expand it. And once you expand it, then it quickly turns and look at that. You have all individual paths. Okay? Now, some of those paths are better than others, as I mentioned, but for the most part, it's, this is a really good job, especially if you're in a pinch, you gotta do something quick, you need a vector, because you need to blow something up really, really big, and you know the quality of raster will be good, but it'll be the file size will be too too large, or you just prefer working with vectors, this is a great tool. I'm using my white arrow just to find all those little vector shapes and you can see like some of this just kind of doesn't make sense why it did that but every time it seems uh, illustrator updates the image trace gets better and better and better now here's something you have to keep in mind too it traces everything in the raster image and keep in mind it traced the background so if i want to get rid of a white background or any background for that matter i got lucky here it's a flat white background i could just select the background in delete it. Now, you got to keep in mind, it doesn't delete all the white background areas because these are enclosed. Either these are their actual own individual shapes. So what I can do is instead of just deleting the whole background like that, I can actually use the magic wand tool. It's a great tool. And what I can do, actually, I actually have to set a tolerance for the magic wand tool. If I double click on the magic wand tool, a little dialog box shows up letting me choose my different tolerance, the fill color, and stroke color, stroke weight, opacity, all these different things. But really, I just want the tolerance I left this at five because it generally works pretty good. You can use that one and it's only going to select that specific color of white. If there's something a little less, a little more, it's not going to choose it. But five is pretty good and it will select these individual places. So I'm just going to close that. I'm going to select it again and look what happens. And not only does it select here, but it does choose those open spaces here because what the magic wand does, it'll select all similar colors. So if I click on that orange, it's going to find all those orange colors. If I select on the green, it's going to find all the green fills. If you select on the red, it's going to find all those very similar to that I mean, five pixels of that red and that blue but this I just want the white I click on the white and I'll press delete on my keyboard and all the white is gone so that's kind of a good way to do that so now I don't have a background I just have these clean shapes very nice and once again they're all vectors so I can make them huge like I said I can zoom in and I'll never see a pixel or I can zoom out and obviously it looks really really good uh, and that is how we do an image trace but I'm gonna keep on going and I'll grab another one here's a very common logo beautiful WWF logo World Wildlife Foundation great logo it's very simple but it works really really well and it's not complex at all basic shapes very nice I'm gonna do the same thing but this time I'm just gonna look at something a little bit different if I click on this I can go to image trace I'll click on image trace and a little bit further that one went really fast right preparing it I can click on this dialog box or this little button here icon image trace panel or I can go to window 
and image trays. If I go here initially, like I did with the first one, I didn't even touch upon this, but there actually is a panel for it. We can get really, really fine tuned with how you want that to, to look eventually. You have these uh, automatic features. Uh, your defaults are still there, just like your defaults are up here. Same idea. Uh, the mode, how you want it to look with color, grayscale, or black and white. This obviously has no color, so it will be black and white. And the different threshold of how much you want, how much detail you want, how little detail you want. And there's also the advanced features of looking at your paths and your corners and your, the noise, depending on the kind of uh, picture you have. Your method, if you want things to be cut out or if you want things to just be overlapped instead. Uh, that's entirely up to you. You can play around with these uh, choices, especially if you're looking for a very specific look. But if you're looking for something very quick, then just do something really, really quick. Do you want to create fills and strokes or just strokes? Um, a bunch of different options. And right now, I was just saying there's 17 paths and two colors, and there's going to be a 415 anchors. That's fine. Not a big deal. But what I will do, I will go to my... Um, uh, the default of high fidelity photo, which kind of isn't necessary. This is the preview, so it's going to take a little bit of time, but once again, it's a very simple shape, so I, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, with something complex, which I'm going to show you next, it's going to be even longer. And generally, I just at least want to show you uh, how that will look uh, with all the paths. This actually is taking a little bit longer than I would assume, depending on your computer and all that, but nonetheless, there it is. I'm happy with that. And I can, like I said, I can go to color. I can play around with what is actually being traced. Uh, it shows me the image and all that. It just shows me the outlines or it just shows me outline with source image, just the source image. But I like the trace, just the tracing results. The default is really, really good. And once I'm done, once you're happy with this, once again, you still want to expand it. If it's not there, you go to object, expand, same idea. And now it is officially a uh, vector. And once again, that white background is still there. So I'd have to delete that. I could just click it and delete it and it will get rid of most of it but not all of it how do i do that magic wand click on the white and it should get rid of everything but once again i got rid of those that's not good but we can always fix that because it uh, didn't do the cutout which this was the method of cutting out or overlapping i just chose the overlap okay, so let's try the opposite way let me go back a little bit and let's do the overlap method or the method that is cut out not the overlap sorry uh, abutting as opposed to overlap all right so i'm going to take it this time i'm going to move it over make sure that you expand it don't forget that and now it is vector and now i can just choose the white background i'll delete it and if i delete this one too remember it's cut out now as opposed to the opposite of being um uh, overlapped and it's not going to find that let me do that again There we go. I'm going to choose that one. And there we go. Now all the white is gone. So that actually is a nice little method to know, to play around with, uh, just to make sure. And there I have it. It's really super duper clean. Even look at these letters. These letter forms are really, really nice. If you zoom in really, really close, it did such a great job. Obviously, there's little, like I said, little things you might want to work with, but generally it does an excellent job. Now I'm going to do one more. And this one, like I said, is a little more complex. It's this little flower picture I took. I'm going to drag and drop it into Illustrator. I'm going to size it down. Now, close up, it's not the greatest quality, but it is pretty decent considering, and it was really large. I'm going to click on that, and I'm just going to go to my image trace, and I'm going to do my uh, default. And once again, this is going to take, should take a lot longer. And I'm going to go to my high fidelity photo. And this should be the best, but even this on its own is pretty cool. You can use these as an interesting background graphic or something interesting that you want to use. Uh, it can do a pretty cool job. Now looking at that, it did a pretty great job. And once again, if I expand it, it's going to show, it's going to actually vectorize it. But it's about to show me just by the preview of what it's going to look like with just all the vectors. I will expand it. And there it is. And that is uh, pretty intense. And from afar, you would not be able to tell that's a raster or a vector. Um, obviously, when you zoom in, obviously, we can tell those are vectors. And each individual one is a vector. These beautiful colors you could choose from. Really, really great. So there's a few different reasons why we want to get vectors, too. We could actually choose a color from these and actually have something nice. But from afar, like I said, you cannot tell that's uh, really a vector. Uh, but you can play with it as a vector. But keep in mind, just because it's a vector now, and, and, but it's a very complex vector, so it will have a larger file size. Maybe not the same file size as a, a raster version of this depending on the resolution but you might want to play around with that see what works better for you but this is a vector version that has been fully expanded and you can size it up any way you want but keep in mind it will still 
you know, because of its complexity, it will take a little bit longer to do certain things and make it certain sizes. But generally, uh, it is image trace, it's vectorized, it's good to play with.